All right, so in my last video, I talked about the concept of bond polarity and electronegativity a little bit. And the basic conclusion that I reached uh, in my last video is that anytime you have two atoms of different elements bonded together, one of those uh, elements is going to be more electronegative than the other. Therefore, the bond will be polarized towards the more electronegative atom. It will hog up more of the electron density um, within the bond between the two atoms. So the extent of polarity in the chemical bond depends on uh, the electronegativity difference, delta En. And in the case of a large delta En, we call that an ionic bond. So if delta En exceeds 2.0, that is an ionic uh, bond. And it usually occurs between a metal and a nonmetal. So the electron is almost completely transferred. If there's an intermediate electronegativity difference, and numerically that means uh, if it falls between 0.4 and 2.0, we call that a polar covalent bond. So this includes virtually uh, all bonds between uh, all covalent bonds between two nonmetals that are of different elements. And lastly, if the electronegativity difference is small, so if it falls between 0 and 0 0.4, that usually that usually corresponds to a uh, pure covalent bond. So that means you have two atoms that are virtually identical, same element, uh, bonded to one another. So we have delta En. That's that's one uh, that's one tool that we can use to sort of quantify the uh, extent of polarity in a chemical bond. But the truth of the matter is that delta En is actually it it has an arbitrary reference point in it. So it's it's a relative scale. So perhaps maybe uh, we can you know quantify the extent of polarity in a more absolute way. And that's where uh, the dipole moment comes into play. So the dipole moment, which uh, is denoted by mu, is a property that, that exists anytime there's a separation of positive and negative charges. And um, from here on out, let's make the, sim the simplifying assumption that the uh, two particles, that, the, the, that there are two particles that we're uh, talking about here, and they have uh, equal and opposite charges. So in other words, Q1 equals positive Q and Q2 equals negative Q. If this is the case, uh, then the dipole moment mu is going to be given by uh, QR, where R is the distance between the two particles. So with this equation in mind, um, we can kind of switch gears a little bit and uh, you know up apply this equation to a certain scenario. So the, the, the first scenario that uh, we're going to apply this equation to in this video is we're going to apply dipole moment to a, a bond that is completely ionic. So what do I mean by completely ionic? I'm talking about a complete transfer of the electron from one atom to another, 100 percent. So if you remember, um, the charge of a proton and the charge of an electron uh, are uh, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That is uh, what we call the elementary charge, which is usually denoted E. So electron has negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and uh, the proton has positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we're talking about separating a, an electron from a proton here. And the simplifying assumption is made that the uh, that the length of the chemical bond is approximately 130 picometers. So um, from this data, you can calculate uh, a dipole moment, approximate dipole moment of a bond that is completely ionic. So the way that you do that is, okay, so mu is equal to qr. Well, q is, uh, is, is the same thing as e because we're talking about protons and neutrons here, or excuse me, protons and electrons. So q, uh, mu is equal to qr, it's equal to er, which is equal to, you know, you just plug e in, plug r in. That gives you... 2.1 times 10 to the negative 17 uh, coulombs times picometers. But let's see if we can't get this into SI units. Uh, okay, so it looks like I've already done the conversion, but you can verify yourself that if you convert this to coulombs uh, times meters, you'll get uh, 2.1 times 10 to the negative 29th. And 
this quantity is actually equal to 6.2 uh, Debye's. So th the Debye is uh, a common unit for uh, dipole moment, for reporting dipole moments. And uh, one Debye is equal to 3.34 times 10 to the negative 30 coulombs times meters. So in this video, I kind of, you know, I'm kind of skipping the step a little bit. I'm not really, you know, doing the whole conversion, but, you know, on paper, but, you know, it's, it's implied. So with that in mind, uh, we get an approximate dipole moment for, you know, a completely ionic bond where the length of the bond is 130 picometers of 6.2 Debye's. So let's uh, let's shift gears a little bit and discuss another property, um, and just another way to you know quantify the extent of polarity in a chemical bond, and we call it um, percent ionic character. So what the percent ionic character is is it's the measured dipole of the bond divided by the dipole moment um, if the electron is completely transferred, which is a hypothetical situation and then times 100 percent now when I originally drew this I forgot to put in the hundred percent so I tried to just sneak it in right here so so uh, as an example let's consider a diatomic molecule with a bond length of 130 picometers and a measured dipole moment of 3.0 uh, Debye's well we just uh, established a second ago that when we make the assumption that the bond length is 130 picometers, our dipole moment, if the electron is completely transferred, is going to be 6.2 Debye's. So that takes care of our denominator in this, in this problem. Our numerator is simply going to be that measured dipole. So all you have to do is plug in those values, and don't forget to tack on your uh, times 100%. Of course, uh, Debye is going to cancel out with Debye, which will give you nothing but a percent, and it's about 48%. So, uh, no chemical bond is actually 100% ionic. Um, it's 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 a it's kind of like an asymptote that it never that it never you know truly reaches. I mean, there are some pretty um, large electronegativity difference, and there are some pretty high uh, percent ionic characters. But uh, no substance is known that has a complete separation of positive and negative charge.